Correct. All right, so that being said, let's dive into the next topic. Iowa settles with their strength coach, Chris Doyle. He is, uh, they have separated. Basically, basically he got fired uh, and, and got some money on the way out, right? He was making $800,000 a year, and, well, now he's not. But he gets to walk away with $1.1 million, and they just split, and they're doing another independent investigation into the racial disparities that are going on inside of that locker room and the cultural problems that they are attempting to to figure out where things went wrong. Uh, I I want to say good for Kirk Ferentz, and, and Gary Barta, the AD, has said that he is going to stick by Kirk Ferentz. But it is hard for me to believe that Ferentz did not know that this stuff was going on. I, I feel like Ferentz is the one that set the culture. Now, did he do the things that, uh, that Doyle ended up doing? It, no, that wasn't him. But I, I can't praise Ferentz too much for this because I feel like he was a part of instituting this culture. So now, I'm not I'm not gonna praise him, but but I'm not gonna kill him either. I mean, right, you know, and that's what did I'm. He, did he just not take it seriously when 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 he heard these things were happening? Maybe, you know. And there's a there's definitely some some uh, I don't know what you would say some blame to go for that. Yeah, but but I also don't know what complaints actually got to him in the past. You know. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, Albert jumped in and said he was the highest paid strength and conditioning coach in America, right? Yes, uh, well, eight hundred thousand dollars. Simply because the highest paid strength and conditioning coach left Alabama for Georgia. Uh, even still, I think uh, I think Cochran was only making like seven hundred and whatever million. So it it was or not million, excuse me, hundred thousand dollars, whatever. Uh, he was so, yeah. he was making less than Doyle, but Doyle had also been there uh, for since nineteen ninety nine. I mean, twenty one years. Uh, he's, that's, a long, that's a long time to hold a job. That's fine. Yeah, uh, and, and I think getting him a one point one million dollar severance package to walk away is fine. Yeah, and I and think I think that's okay. That's not a massive, massive buyout. No. Um, this guy, this guy yeah. will find employment elsewhere. Maybe not in the college football world, but but he knows how to get people in shape. He knows how to build line ready to do things. So yeah, I could I could see him going to the NFL. Uh, he can yeah. build offensive linemen. Like no, nobody's he, he knows he, yeah, he's he's good at what he does and he'll he'll be fine. Yeah. Uh William Brown said, uh Ference has always had my respect, but this hurts. He had to have enabled, right? Guy's been the head honcho for decades. Yeah. He he brought in Doyle as soon as he got hired. Uh he is the longest tenured head coach in college football. And Doyle has been his right hand man who helps instill that culture for the head coach yeah. the whole time. So, Michael Fritz jumps in. He said, what's up, fellas? Michael, how you doing, buddy? Uh, glad to see you back in here. So, yes, at this... Now, I will say this. It does suck. Like, if you were a player that had to go through some of that stuff that you felt uncomfortable in that locker room, that you felt uncomfortable having to deal with Doyle, to see him get over a million dollars to walk away and then you have to come back and play during a, a pandemic season, you know, now obviously they don't have to because... That AD at Iowa has said, if you want to sit out due to concerns over the coronavirus, then you're still going to have your scholarship when you come back. Right. Um, But it's still got to sting a little bit to see him walk away with that money. But, I mean, there's no right way to go about that. that. that, That's just how contracts work. Yeah. Okay? We're We're in a sticky situation of there's not a whole lot of proof. There's more probable than not that we believe he did some of the things that he did, I guess, or else they wouldn't have fired him if they believed that he didn't. Okay. But because he is under contract and he's owed certain amounts of money, you have to negotiate some type of buyout. Yeah. Seeing him gone and away from your program. If you were a victim of this has got to be some sort of positive. While you don't want to see him get a check and get paid on his way out. It's, it's better than seeing him continue to be there and you don't have enough to fire him with calls simply because of how labor laws are written, which are a good thing, not a bad thing. And, and then also just the nature of the complaint being a, a, you know, we've got these complaints, they go back several years. It's really hard to see what happened and we believe it happened, but we don't have enough that would hold up in a, in a court. 
Yeah. And that's the difference is we're going to fire him because we believe you. But our attorneys will tell us if we fire him for cause, he will sue us and get way. You'll, you'll see us write him a much bigger check than 1.1 million. So let's let him just get gone. Let's pay him off and let's get out of this. And let's try and, and rebuild. this. I, I think, I think if you're a player and you were a victim of this rather in the past or a current player now, having him not wear the uniform that you wore that matters to you has to be a win. It just has to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I agree. I, well, this is something that I've harped on a lot throughout this stuff that we're going through. Now it's easy for me to say this because I'm not one of these people that have to go through any of the shit that these guys go through. Okay. But I believe in finding victory in things. And when you find the victory, don't nitpick the victory. Okay. It's yeah. too damn hard to get a win in all of these cases all the time. When you get the win, don't nitpick the win. Just, just take the win and fight the next fight because there's too many fights in front of you to keep looking back to see, well, did I win that a hundred percent? Did I win that 90%? What, what the judges score it? No. Did your hand get raised? Did you get what you want at the end? Yes. Then, then we got another fight in front of us. The fight is too big and it's too hard to keep looking back and nitpicking the victories that we come across. Yes, I agree. Uh, William Brown, uh, Albert said, yes, good take. Chris, uh, William Brown said, maybe karma catches up and Campbell's Cyclones finally get a dub over the Hawkeyes this year. Uh, it'd be nice. I mean, it, it seems like every single year. That, that they, game has uh, been one of the funnest games every year. Or yeah. craziest, maybe not always fun, craziest games it's every year. definitely bananas. Uh, up, up there a little more, Albert said, somebody either knew about it and condoned it or someone's making it up. Um, but, at Chris, you hit the nail on the head there. I, I think take the win, move yeah. on. And then we'll figure this thing out as we go. I think it's good on Iowa. Go ahead and get this culture shift changing and uh, and get it moving in the right direction. And then we'll figure out the rest of the stuff later. At, at some point, and I'm going to harp on this a little bit, and I don't mean yeah. to, because I don't, like I said, I've never been a victim of this. So it's hard. I can't walk a mile in your shoes. I don't, I have no idea what it's like. Okay. But, but what I think is, is I kind of, I don't even know how I want to say this without, I'm not sure where you're going. I'm <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm debating on if I even want to. I So let's say Kurt Ferentz allowed this stuff to happen. Okay. And then he became educated and realized, man, I was wrong. And I, sh- I everything that I used to think was ignorant and foolish and wrong. And I've changed my opinion and I've changed my thought. And now I've got to begin to change the culture. I I think there's something beautiful to that. I appreciate the fact that we sometimes get second chances like that to admit that we were wrong, even in leadership. And you don't have to cut the cord completely and just fire that person and say, you no longer get to work again. But, but he, he saw the error of his ways in the past and he's beginning to change that culture. I, there has to be some bonus for that because there was a day and a time where I was ignorant and I was foolish, and I said things that I regret, and I can't ever go back and change them. I'm not that person today, but at some point in time, if we all grew up a certain way, if you see the light and you find the shift and you change your your, your mind, mentality, and actions going forward in life, if, I, if I'm going to be held to the worst standard that I ever had in my life, then, then I'm just always going to be guilty. Yeah. No, you're right. It's it, it's the most cliche thing in the world to say, you know, I won't let that moment define me. But it, that's basically what cancel culture does, right? It, they they define a person by the one worst moment that they've ever had, right? And this could, I mean, I'm not saying this is the worst moment. If this happened over no, a decade or twenty years, right? Then this isn't a moment. But this was a I used to be this person. And, and now, now I see this world and I see what's going on. And you know what? The the people in the streets have, have shown me I'm wrong. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, I, I, I get what you're saying. who I am to live in this world that we live in today. And I think that that's a victory for the protest. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Albert said, when do you guys think first weekend of college football will be August 29th? I think there will be the games on August 29th. I, I am standing by that. Yep. I get a little nervous as I see some of the corona tick ups happening in the South. I think we're still going to be fine. But still I'm, be fine. I'm going for it with not just starting. 
I, I'm still riding butts in the seats, man. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Damien jumped in on YouTube, said, my question is, why did it take them so damn long to let all of this come out? It, well, here's the situation. Uh, all of the players did not feel comfortable or strong enough to yep. come out and say this until uh, everything that started happening around this country. When more people started speaking up, they uh, it was kind of the Me Too movement as well, right? Yep. Uh, once one person was brave enough to stand up and say something, everybody else came out and said it's, something. It's, some of this so, stuff is really hard to, to, to walk in and say. Yes. Okay? Because you don't know that the people there are even going to believe you. Yeah. And, and therefore, you know, this guy is a big, powerful person, and you're just a kid that's told, you know, do what you're supposed to do. You want to you wanna stay here at Iowa? You do what you're supposed to do. You want to get a shot at the NFL? Do what yeah. you're supposed to do. You, 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 you do what you, you just fall in line, and, and today they have power. And more than they've ever had it. So, up it looks like Apple. Chris froze. There, oh, there we go. We got you back. It looks like you froze. <laughs> That's uh, so far. I hadn't dropped any frames, so All right. we'll see. Uh, Michael said, "Cancel culture needs to be canceled. It makes me sick." And then Albert said, uh, "Hope so." And that's talking about. Uh,